Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So what I'm going to do here, I go to Design View, and this guy right here, by the way, who's not an extender, this is actually the editor control that's in our toolbox here, CC2. And notice that all he is, he has an ID running equal server. Wham, we have a full-blown editor that we can use. Pretty cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and view this thing in a browser here just to show you some of the behavior of these controls. So here's a button control. And if I click on the button, notice we are getting that JavaScript to run on the client side. Are you really freaking sure? And if I hit cancel, You'll notice it doesn't post to the server. However, if I click OK, all of a sudden it gets a green scroll bar at the bottom. It did actually post it to the server. I don't even need an event handler I don't on the server side. I'm just showing you that it is going to post to the server. How about picking a date? If I go ahead and click on this to pick a date, look at that. I get a full-blown calendar that appears. And keep in mind that a lot of these extender controls as well as the regular controls are completely configurable from the property window. And of course, this editor, while well, I might have some text, this is some text, right? This is uh, terrible typing. This is some text. You know, make something bold and italicize and underline, right? And it's a really neat editor that you can go ahead and work with. That's included, right? So this just shows us how we can use some of these controls that are in the toolbox here. And of course, when you download the Ajax Control Toolkit, you also get a full-blown sample website demonstrating the possibilities of all these different controls. Sea Dragon, by the way, as I said, allows you to zoom in on images. There's a lot of different examples already available on the web. You just literally, you can go ahead and Bing it, if you will, or Google it, the Sea Dragon term, and you'll find several different websites. Now keep this in mind, when you're doing uh, this Sea Dragon, there's two different ways that we can do this. We can do this with the Ajax Control Toolkit, specifically using the Sea Dra Dragon Control, or there's also a Silverlight version, and that one is of course called Deep Zoom. The key to having this whole Sea Dragon thing work is to take whatever image you have, have it as detailed as possible of course, so that people will be able to zoom in and see something useful, and then create a DZI version of it. In other words, you'll have to create a special XML version of it using a DZI file. And of course, there's different websites and also include with the control, you can actually go ahead and create this DZI file yourself. For example, if I go to just cdragon.com right now, right from my uh, PowerPoint presentation, you can see it brought me up to this one page here showing us the image, welcome to Sea Dragon. And you'll notice that nicely done is ridiculously small in the center here. But if I just click on it with my mouse and continue to click on it, you can see how I'm able to actually zoom in and actually see the details of the letters. You know, just ridiculous zooming. Also, keep in mind I can make it full screen if I want, right? And I can also go back to the original size. And there's a lot of different examples here, of course. For example, I like this cool bicycle one. Um, and then being able to zoom right in to the actual fork. Right, you can drag and drop as well, just to see what's going on here. You know, it's just amazing how you can zoom in. And this, of course, is all part of Sea Dragon. This is going to be another large feature that I think is going to be one of the uh, things that everybody's going to want to implement in their websites, especially if they have any kind of graphics at all. People like to zoom in. I can also see in the future uh, how people are going to want additional capabilities. Like I'm going to want a screenshot of a portion of that that zoom in, if you will, or do something else with that information. Check out Z Dragon. Like I said, this is going to be another big thing that a lot of people are going to be doing this next year. Now, one thing that Microsoft is currently working on right now is the ASP.NET AJAX library. Now, you might be thinking, what is this? Isn't this just like the AJAX library we saw before? Well, no, the AJAX add on, which gave us AJAX functionality in .NET 2.0, was one thing, giving us some client side scripts and some server side scripts controls, but the AJAX library here, what we're talking about, is something that's currently in beta. 
the Ajax library actually is the combination of all of the functionality that we might need for doing ASP.NET Ajax programming. It's going to include all the necessary JavaScript files, such as the Ajax JavaScript library. It's going to include the Ajax Control Toolkit, something I just demonstrated a little bit a little bit ago. It's also going to include jQuery, jQuery, which is an awesome JavaScript library that Microsoft did not write, gives us easy access to all the different controls just based on their ID, and we can go ahead and manipulate them, very much like CSS. And it also gives us support for ASP.NET and MVC, Model View Controller sites. Now this ASP.NET Ajax library current version is 0.9.11. This is the beta version. It is not complete, but there's a lot you can go ahead and download and play around with. For example, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize all my windows here. And I'm going to take a look at my uh, the folder here for the ASP.NET Ajax beta library. Notice inside of here, for example, I've got a readme doc and a license.txt, and I've got scripts. Now if I open up scripts, you're going to see all the different Ajax library files. And something you might think of is like, wow, there's a lot of Ajax libraries. Yeah, there are a lot of JavaScript client-side stuff here. Originally when Ajax was released, when it was codenamed Atlas, there was only three files. There was Microsoft Ajax.js, uh, there was Microsoft Ajax Forms, and I think there was one for the timer as well, Microsoft Ajax Timer. Now, of course, they've added a lot of other JavaScript libraries that we can go ahead and take advantage of. Now, mind you, there's two versions of every one of these scripts. So, I mean, like looking at this, wow, there's from this guy all the way down to this guy. Hey, that's 34 items, as it says it on there on the left side. Well, really, that means there's 17 scripts, all right? Which is still a heck of a lot, but it's not like 34, right? Notice, like I said, there's two for every script. Like here, for example, here's Ajax Timer dot debug dot js and then there's ajax timer dot js just so you know that the microsoft ajax timer dot js version has been minified yes minified meaning that all the spaces have been taken out of it all the comments have been stripped out of it any unnecessary code has been stripped out of it making it a much smaller file for example notice the size of this guy is three kilobytes right and look at the one above it the debug version Hey, that's six kilobytes. That one has all the comments and all the white space. That's the human readable one. That, of course, is going to be larger, and that's the one when you do JavaScript debugging that you would actually step into. So we have a debug version of a JavaScript file, and we have a regular version. For example, let me go ahead and open up this debug version. I'll go ahead and just click on Edit. And this is bringing it up in Notepad, although I could bring it up in Visual Studio or whatever. But you notice how we have some very easy-to-read function, execute, uh, the name of the file. Uh, we've got comments in here, right? And other things as well. But it's all readable. And if I'm debugging this, I might step into one of these functions line by line. I can also search and basically just learn about what this thing does. Notice here's where we're actually registering the class at sys.ui.underscore/timer, And of course, registering the script all together. Hey, this is pretty easy to read. Now you may be thinking, well, I don't know much about JavaScript. For maybe some of you folks, you don't know about JavaScript, and this is not that hard, easy to read at all. But try to compare that guy to this guy here. And, well, I don't know much about JavaScript. For maybe some of you folks, you don't know about JavaScript, and this is not that hard, easy to read at all. But try to compare that guy to this guy here. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.